I was just wondering, what have you sensed from your players since you accepted the Rose Bowl invitation uh, in terms of excitement level? Yeah, I think our guys are really excited. I, I, I think it's fair and obvious to say that our guys and, and myself and everybody would love to have been um, part of the, the four. Um, but again, you know, I, I, there was cameras in there live when, when, when we made the announcement and then and, and, uh, we're not, didn't, make, didn't make the playoffs and we're going to be going to the Rose Bowl. There's excitement about that. We've had, a, we've had a wonderful season. There's been a lot of really good things uh, happen. There's been tremendous growth from the beginning of the season to the end. And we're playing a, a good football team. I mean, you know, you, you watch these guys and you study these guys and you look at their talent. Um, you know, you can make an argument that, you know, if, if, you just, if you just take where teams are at at the end of the season and, and don't talk about overall record, but just say who are the best teams in college football right now, you can make an argument that USC would, would be in that conversation. So um, I think our guys are excited. You know, now it's kind of getting all the things organized so their families and their friends and um, can make plans and schedules so they know when they're going to be able to go home for Christmas, you know, when, they're, when they need to be back here, how we're traveling, how we're getting there, getting all those things organized because um, if you don't do it the right way, it can become a distraction. You got a lot of things going on this time of year. Like I said, you got final exams, you got bowl schedules, what to expect with that. You got a lot of people patting them on the back. We got to handle that the right way. Um, you have guys making decisions about, you know, the NFL. There's a lot of things going on, and you got to manage all those things well, so that uh, so that you keep your focus where it needs to be, which is which is on USC. Season season ending injuries. Some of these you guys were aware of. Some of you're not. Uh, Brendan Mann, Paris Palmer, Andrew Nelson, Chance Sorrell, Jan Johnson, Naeem Warman White, Jason Varanik, Jake Cooper. Vaughn Walker, Brandon Polk, and Nick Bowers. So you know, we don't talk about a lot of those things during the season, um, as you guys know, because you know I, I want people um, to have to prepare for the possibility of those guys coming back at some point, not knowing when that's going to happen. Uh, but those guys all had seasoning, season-ending injuries. Um, you know, I hear a lot of other programs and a lot of other uh, you know, media people talk about injuries and things like that and what they had to overcome. We, we had a lot to overcome this year, so um, um, I, will, I will kind of put that out so you guys are aware and then we can just move on and never talk about it again. I'm just curious, you brought it up about guys thinking about the NFL. Are you able to share if any of your players have put in for the draft advisory board? And you've talked before about bringing a company or two in to talk to the kids and their families. Can you just give us a little bit more detail about how long that process takes and how all that shakes out? Yeah, I won't get into the specifics right now. Uh, you know, maybe in the spring, like we can get into the specifics or or at another point. But yeah, we, we have a company that works with us year round, that comes in and talks to our players from the time they're a freshman to their time they're a senior about the draft draft process, about how to select an agent, about how how to maximize as much value as possible, um, and got all kinds of data to support uh, what they're doing. They work with a number of programs across the country. Uh, and then on top of that, um, I'll have individual meetings with guys and their player, uh, excuse me, and their parents, and do that as much as we possibly can and educate them on it. Um, so that's kind of an ongoing, ongoing process. We've done it. I've done it for the six years that, that I've been a head coach, um, and it's been help. It's been helpful, but it is a little bit of a distraction right now for the players, for the coaches, for everybody trying to kind of manage all those things. Uh, but it's an important decision. <laughs> Um, I'm a big believer, no different than any other decision you make in life. You want to have as much information as you possibly can to make an educated decision and then, and then go from there. So um, the, the new rule now in the NFL is you can have five players put in for draft grades, um, which I think is good. Uh, they've also changed that in terms of the way they do it. The way they do it now is you're either a first round guy, a second round guy, or go back to school. It used to be third, you know, fourth through seventh was the next category and so on and so forth. So now it's basically you're going to be a first round draft choice, you're going to be a second round draft choice, and then you're going to be um, graded as go back to school. The problem is that even that's a little bit gray. I think one of the things that I saw the other day, I think there's 96 players right now in the country with first round grades. <laughs> 
the issue is I think there's only 32 spots, so you make a decision to come out of school because you're being recommended to be a first round draft choice and you don't get drafted till the third round, not a wise choice, especially if you got a chance to come back one more year and bump from the third round to the first round. That's, that's the decision you should make every single time. So um, it's difficult. It's difficult to make a great decision. There's a lot of information out there, um, and it can be challenging. You know, you talk about our assistant coaches. I think, you know, I think that's a compliment. I think, you know, whenever you have, whenever you have assistant coaches being approached and people trying to, to, to hire your staff, that means that you're doing something right and, and, and they want to kind of get a piece of it. I think we've had three coaches approached, three separate coaches approached for multiple head coaching jobs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to keep this staff together as long as we possibly can. Um, but they're talented guys, and guys are going to leave at some point for head coaching opportunities. We want that for them, but we want to try to keep the staff together as long as we possibly can. So for me right now, what I'm concerned about is doing everything in my power and our power here at Penn State to put all the things into place to continue to build on what we're doing right now. You know, that's the coaches, keeping our coaches together for as long as we possibly can contracts and supporting them the best we possibly can and then all the other things that we need to do. We've done a lot of studies on what programs across the country are doing um, to compete at this level and then we're trying to put as many of those things in position as possible so we can you know we can uh, capitalize on this uh, uh, momentum we have right now.